Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back uh, to our Feed the Beast Bees walkthrough. This is episode number three. It's going to be a pretty exciting episode. For the first time, we're going to be getting into crossbreeding, and we're going to be making an automatic crossbreeding machine. And this episode, we're going to start off with uh, making some tropical bees, uh, getting them breeding together. Then we're going to talk about how to convert bees to actually uh, change a bee from one species to another. Then we're going to talk about crossbreeding and craft a beealizer, which is going to be one of our main tools. Uh, then we're going to get into auto crossbreeding with our automatic crossbreeding machine that I've designed. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to make some apiarist pipes. And uh, hopefully by the end of the episode, we can finish making the common branch. So for this episode, you're going to need a few things. These are your required items. Go ahead and uh, pause the video here and go collect these items and we'll be ready to uh, go through it. Okay, let's get started. Welcome back to Mizeco Labs. As you can see, Mize has been busy. In his Let's Play, he's built all the walls and the floors to this place. So we're moving right along. Before you know it, we'll have our B floor. I also got myself a jetpack so I can fly now, which really helps. That uh, took a visit to the nether. I encourage you guys to go check out Mize's Let's Play and uh, see how this is progressing. But uh, anyway, back to bees. I'm going to run over to our chest here and grab our tropical bees. Now we want to get these guys running because the tropical bees produce uh, silky combs, I believe is what they're called. And when you process a silky comb, you can get a silky propolis and honey drops. And the silky propolis can be further processed into a, a silk wisp and just normal propoluses, which uh, are both very useful in some of the more advanced designs. We're going to use the regular propolis to make apiary pipes, which will help us make our automatic bee breeding machine, and eventually when you build up enough, uh, you can use the silk wisps, the uh, silk wisps to make an apiarist suit, which will protect you from bees with nasty side effects. As you can see since last time I expanded our little dirt hole here, I've added a room with another one of our simple breeding machines. And I'm just going to drop our tropical bees in here. Now, if I remember correctly, the tropical bees require uh, a fern or a, uh, a vine to grow. So we do need to run out to the woods and grab a fern. Um, but before I go do that, let's check on these other bees over here. You can see I've got a sorting machine jammed with a red light on. And uh, it's because we are now full down here with drones. So there's nowhere for these drones to go. And so the machine is still functioning. Uh, but it's about to be jammed. So yeah, after this next cycle this should be this should, this machine will be jammed up. So we have, this is great, we got a full stack of meadow drone, meadows drones and a full stack of forest drones. I'll uh, be right back, I'm going to go grab a fern so we can get those uh, tropical bees running. Okay guys, I, uh, I just ran out in the woods and got myself some ferns. There they are right there. Uh, keep in mind that if you're going to get your own ferns, uh, you need to, oops. <laughs> Uh, if you're wondering what's happening, I'm poisoned. I got poisoned by those jungle bees. Yeah. Anyways, uh, when you go to get your own ferns, uh, be sure to use the shears, otherwise they won't drop. So you have to make sure you shear them off from the ground. Let me put these right here. I don't think you actually die from being poisoned, and I'm in a pretty safe place here, so once my hearts go all the way down, I think then I'll be fine. So, Tropical Queen is in there, 
which we know because I've been stung already. Uh, no flowers. So let's jump down a fern. Let's see how she does. I'll reset the queen. Okay, looks like we're good to go. That's great. Uh, now, some of you might be wondering why I allowed myself to get poisoned like that. It's because the only thing that can protect you from the effects of bees is the apiarist suit. Unfortunately, the only way to get an apiarist suit is using silky wisps to construct one. And you get silky wisps from tropical queens. So we just have to uh, let this guy run for a bit and hope that we get lots of silky combs to process into our first apiarist suit. But that's going to be quite a while. I don't expect that to happen for probably two or three more episodes. These uh, these guys really do take quite a long time to uh, to make enough material for you. So let's uh, speed up the process with some impregnated frames. And hopefully, uh, yeah, now that we got these guys running, we'll get some good stuff. Until then, I'm leaving those guys alone in their own room so they can hopefully not get to me. Great, alright, let's uh let's start our first bee breeding. The first branch that we're gonna do is the common branch. Uh, common branch consists of let me just look it up here, make sure I've got it right. Yes, uh, forest bees, meadows bees, common bees, and cultivated bees. The uh, first bees that we're gonna make is the common bees. And they're simple enough to make, you just gotta crossbreed forest with meadows. So let's grab a forest princess and a meadows drone, and we're going to crossbreed these two guys and see what we get. Drop them in. Let them mate. Okay, so now we have our forest queen. Uh, hopefully we'll get some common bees that pop out on the other side over here. While that's working, let's talk about why we made such a big pile of drones. Now, the uh, reason is because we can drop a princess up in here and set this machine up in such a way that it will convert whatever princess we put up here, whatever species, into forest. Now, the best bee to use for this is the rocky. Um, if you remember in an earlier episode, I said the Rocky Princess is the bread and butter. And uh, that's because you just have so many of them from caving and uh, quarrying. So let's go ahead and drop our Rocky Princess in up here. Okay, great. Now we've got a Rocky Queen. You can see one of our forest drones was consumed. Oh, I guess the, uh, the machine was jammed. So uh, it stuck another one in there. But uh, let's lower the number here to just 60. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drop a chest right there. Now let's, uh, let's see what this is going to do. When this spills over, we're going to have a princess, and it's either going to be a rocky princess, a forest princess, or some hybrid. So where are our princesses going to go? Well, there's no princesses in this... Uh, matrix here, so unknown items go to red. So no matter what, no matter what kind of princess we get, it's going to be fed back into the top. What about the drones? Okay, so we have purebred forest drones here. What's going to pop out on the other side over here are going to be some mix of a hybrid bee. Okay, so whatever that hybrid is, the sorting machine doesn't care what kind of drone comes through it as long as it's a drone. It doesn't differentiate by species. So even though this says forest drone, this is really just drone to the sorting machine. So no matter what kind of drone comes out of this apiary, it's going to send it to yellow. So all the drones are going to come down through here. But something interesting happens with red power. With red power, the pipes will send it to the closest block that it comes in contact with. So when the drone gets here, it's going to try and feed into the bottom. But what's in here already? Forest drones, purebred forest drones. 
So our hybrid Rocky and Forest are not going to end up in here. It will refuse to drop them in there. Instead, they're going to continue through the pipe and end up in this chest. Now, after the first cycle, we might get a 50% Rocky, 50% Forest hybrid. Um, it's a little more compli complicated than that, but just for now, um, you'll have a 50-50, right? Uh, so that'll get dumped in the chest. Then the next time around, the princess that gets dropped in here, it might be a 50-50 Forest Rocky made it again with a purebred forest drone. So then you're going to end up with something like, uh, oh great, math people are going to kill me, but I don't know, 25 to 75 percent, so 25 percent rocky, 75 percent forest. And then it's going to cycle again and again and again and again until this rocky queen basically becomes a forest queen or a forest princess. And then once that starts happening, you'll actually see the offspring that comes off of here be more purebred forest drones. So those forest drones will travel past the apiary and try and feed into the apiary, and since they will match these guys, they'll start stacking back up. So if we leave this machine long enough, what will eventually happen is these forest drones will replenish themselves all the way back up to 64, and you'll have a purebred uh, forest princess. This is a great little machine uh, for basically just hands-free changing princesses into the type of uh, species that you want. So I'm going to let this run and I'll come back when uh, they are done breeding. Okay, so uh, I believe this is done. Let's see what we got. We got a common drone, that's nice. Meadows drone and a forest princess. That's great. Now let's uh, let's go ahead and crossbreed the forest princess with the common drone and see if we can go for more common. Uh, in the meantime, it looks like this machine has jammed up. And uh, okay, yes, yeah, so you can see why we have a rocky comb. So this is a new item. Pull that out of there. You can see the princess come back over, and now she's breeding again. That's great. Now you see why it did this is because uh, the rocky comb is, is produced by the rocky um, species. So since there was no rocky combs in this matrix here, it sends everything it doesn't recognize to red. So of course it sent the rocky comb up and dropped it into where the princess was, which jammed up our machine. But that won't happen again because now we have a rocky comb. Boom. Now it should run smoothly. These must be hybrid forest drones. Uh, it's too bad that we can't tell, right? Well, I think we can fix that. Let's uh, let's take one of those with us, and we're gonna run back to the lab, and I'll show you guys a fancy new machine. Okay, so what I'm gonna make for you guys is a beelizer, which is going to be the most useful tool uh, in all of your bee breeding. And to make one of those, we need a few things. Uh, first, you want to grab a bucket of water and go over to your carpenter and put some water in it. So you put the water right up here where we put the seed oil before. And then we have water in our carpenter. Now, to uh, make the beelizer, you need a few items. You need four tin ingots. You need two glass panes. You need two redstone. And you need one diamond. So if we left click, we can arrange our recipe up here. Diamond, and there's our beelizer. Just gotta turn on our engine. It should make it for us. Hmm, what am I missing here? Probably not enough water. Let's grab more water. Yep, there we go. So now that we have our beelizer, 
we can actually look at the inner traits of the bees that, that we have. Now before we can get this working, this also runs on honey drops, just like the Habitat Locator did. So let's uh, grab some of my honeycombs, drop them into our centrifuge, and get some honey drops going. Okay, uh, four should be good enough for now. Let's grab four and let's take a look at our bee here. If we put the forest drone right here, we'll drop down, and now we get to see the inner traits. So you have an active and an inactive. Of course, the active is what you're going to see the bee um, do and look like. So the active species is forest, so it looks like a forest, but the inactive is rocky, so we see it's a forest rocky hybrid. You have a shorter lifespan on this end, uh, shorter, shorter, so this is matching, matching, matching. Now, flowers and rock. This is interesting. The bee requires flowers, but if we were to breed it more with uh, rocky species, it may actually prefer rocks to flowers to operate. Uh, we have low fertility that's active here. The inactive is high. It shows the area that it operates within. And uh, there's no effect, unlike the tropical bees which poison you. Go to the second slot. This shows us our climate uh, tolerance and our humid humidity tolerance. This bee requires normal for all. Um, there is no tolerance in either direction, zero, zero. If this was a higher number, then it might be able to tolerate different temperatures and different humidities. Uh, nocturnal means that the bee will operate at night. Flyer means that the bee will operate during rainstorms. And cave means that the bee will operate even if there is a block above the apiary. Uh, most bees require that the have open sky or have a, a panel of glass above the apiary to operate. Now one cool thing is that when we get further into bees, we will be able to manipulate all of these individually uh, using uh, serums. But we're not quite there yet. Uh, three, four, and five are not terribly useful. Uh, you can take a look at them on your, on your own time, but uh, it's really one and two that we're going to be concerned with right now. So uh, yeah, let's go back to the uh, to the dirt hole. Okay, so that time they cycled through and we got a forest princess, a common drone, and a forest drone. And uh, this meadows drone was in here from last time. So let's, uh, let's grab this common drone and take a look at him. Okay, so uh, species is common forests, common forest hybrid. That's great. And how about the queen? Or the princess now, I guess. Okay, the, oh, we have a cultivated. Uh, the cultivated is, a, uh, if you remember the fourth species that we're going for in the, uh, in the common branch. That's not what we're going for right now, so we're gonna try and uh, stick with the common. So we're gonna just, once again, mate the forest and the common. And off they go. And let's see what's happening over here. Oh, check that out. What used to be a rocky is now a forest. But now we have our bealizer, we can actually take a look and see what this uh, queen is. And it is a purebred forest. So we have taken a purebred rocky and changed it into a purebred forest. Um, oops. And we want to allow this um, forest queen to continue in here. And the reason is because even though it's a purebred forest now, it doesn't match all the attributes that we've seen in the Bealizer. So there was lifespan, there was what they prefer, flowers, rocks, uh, humidity tolerance, all that kind of stuff. All that stuff will eventually be worked out until this forest uh, princess is a perfect match to these forest drones. So we're just going to let this run. And uh, let's check in on our tropical. 
Yep, still operating. Our frames are going good. Not jammed up. Hopefully we've got some silky combs that'll come through. Great, we're up to four. So uh, yeah, let's grab these and run back to the base and see if we can get some propolises out of them. Okay, we're back at the centrifuge. Still working on our honeycombs, but uh, I can do that later. Let's drop in our silky combs. Now we're going for uh, silky propolis. I don't believe it yields one every single time. This is a little hit or miss, but from the silky propolis we can get a regular propolis and the silk wisp. So let's hope we get those products. Okay, great, we got four silky propolises. Let's uh, continue processing these. Okay, we got four silk wisps. That's uh, okay for now. Uh, not terribly wonderful. Uh, it takes a ton of these to make an apiary suit. So we still have a long way to go. Unfortunately, I didn't get any regular propoluses, but uh, better luck next time, right? We're just gonna keep on processing those uh, silky combs until we get what we need. We're gonna need four propoluses to make our bee breeding machine. Okay, Let's see what we got this time. Oh, darn it. Went straight to cultivated. That's too bad. Let's take a look at our drones and see which one is closest to being a common force. Diligent. Oh, wow, we're really getting out there now. Okay, so you're not, no longer useful. Purebred forest. Forest meadows hybrid. Forest meadows. Darn. Looks like we're going to have to try and pull things back to where it was. Let's go with the uh, the purebred forest this time. Okay. Uh, cultivated again. Let's see what we've got here. Great. Well, this whole time I've been processing silky combs, trying to get four purposes, and it looks like I finally got them. Uh, now we can move on and build an automatic breeding machine, which is going to make our lives so much easier. You can also see I've got some honey drops in here, uh, quite a few silk wisps, uh, not enough yet to make an apiarist suit, but we're getting there. And uh, we got some beeswax. Now, the beeswax, uh, it's kind of a useless item. There's not too many things you can do with it, but there are a couple of things you can do with it. You can use it to make um, torches. And uh, I believe you can use it to make um, pipe waterproofer. Yeah. But the one thing that we can use this for in beekeeping, which um, saves us on tin, which is a kind of a rare item, is wax capsules. Let's grab a whole bunch of these. And now we can use this to store our seed oil, which is a cheap alternative to the tin. Not that the tin cans are that expensive to begin with, but eh, that's something you can use it for. So yeah, let's go uh, build our first automatic breeding machine. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I am sick and tired of trying to make this forest um, purebred bee. I really wanted to try and make it legitimately for you guys, uh, just using the apiary, but Ah, uh, man, I, I've, I've lost count on how many times I've, I've recycled these bees through here, and it's getting very frustrating. So, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's stop doing this, because it sucks, and let's go ahead and make our automatic bee breeding machine, because that will make life a lot easier. Now, to build this, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you just follow my plans here, I'm going to start it right here on this edge. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to start one back. 
I'm just afraid that I'm going to end up covering this class, and I don't want to do that. Okay. Get our apiary. Posers. Now, once again, I'm not going to tell you how to craft all of this red power stuff. Uh, that's for you to figure out. It's not that hard. Just uh, go into your menu and look at the recipes. forgot I gotta make our apiaris pipes. Now to make an apiaris pipe you need two propoluses and uh, a single diamond transport pipe. But we're gonna make two apiaris pipes today. There it is. Pretty straightforward, a little expensive but when you see what this pipe can do you'll you'll see that it's definitely worth it. Stone transport pipes on either side here. Very good. Get our pneumatic tubes out. Just looking at this, yeah, that doesn't look right. They need to be separated by glass covers. So far, stone. Okay. <coughs> Grab our last <coughs> APR pipe. for a second items out of blocks. Our sandstone transport pipe, which will only interact with other pipes. Well, the transport pipes, I should say, so it won't interact with uh, pneumatic tubes. More piece of glass there. That's our automatic bead breeding machine. Now, I'm not going to go through all the mechanics on how this thing works uh, in this episode. Uh, this episode's already starting to run kind of long. But I'm going to do a bead breeding machine spotlight 
So uh, if you click the link in the description, it'll take you to that spotlight where I will actually go through all the mechanics of this machine if you are interested in learning how it works exactly. But uh, yeah, let's set it up and get it running. We're gonna need some uh, forest drones and some Meadows drones to get this going. Half a stack each should be enough. One princess. Wow, that is really annoying. Oh, it took care of itself, I guess. Oh, there's another one. Hang on, I'm just gonna go kill this spider. Okay, so let's set this up, simple enough, and one of these we're going to drop uh, force drones, and we're going to drop it down in the bottom right hand corner. Same thing with the other side, drop bottom right hand corner, and then in this chest we're going to put in uh, meadows bees like so, and forest bees like so, all on the bottom. Now we gotta get our bees to be going to the right spots. So first we're gonna look at oh my strong that's good. Okay, so we got forest over here on the left side. So we're gonna want meadows princesses to go through the left side. So that's red here. So I'm just gonna set this to princesses. Meadows, right? Forest, meadows. Okay, and then on the opposite side here, in blue, we're going to want the opposite, forest princesses. Very good. Uh, and going out to green, we're going to want the items. Uh, going down to black, we're going to want all drones. And going into this center relay, which is yellow. It's going to be uh, any princesses that aren't meadows or forest. Great, and then down here, we're going to want to replenish our forest drones in this chest. So red is going to be forest drones. And blue is going to be meadows drones. And yellow is going to be everything else. And that's it. All we gotta do is drop our princess in with a drone, and we'll be good to go. So, we got a forest princess. Let's grab a, a Meadows drone from this pile here. Drop them in. Turn it on. And we are good to go. I will uh, come back later when this is done running. Actually, before I do that, let me uh, let me drop one last thing in here. This is a chunk loader. Uh, this is not a needed item to make this machine run, but the chunk loader will keep these chunks loaded, uh, meaning that even if I'm not signed in, this machine will continue to run, which is a good thing because bees take forever to breed. Uh, this is, I, th I believe the chunk loader is unique to multiplayer servers, so if you're just playing by yourself, this may not work. But uh, yeah, if you're on a multiplayer server, go ahead and make yourself a chunk loader to keep your bees running. So cool. Okay guys, uh, I've let this machine run now for a couple of days. Uh, let's see what we've got. Ooh, looks like a cultivated queen. Well, I was going for commons, but we'll uh, have to take what we got here. Cultivated. If we look in here, so these are going to be a whole bunch of common cultivated forest hybrids. And the opposite on this side, this is going to be all meadows hybrids um, with common and cultivated and forest. Um, in the center, uh, yes. See this stack of 63 here? Now you're going to understand the mechanics of the way this works. Uh, when this um, 
filter. I think it's called filter. Uh, whatever. This this block here, when it receives the signal to grab a bee out of this chest, it goes for the first bee it can find, which is going to be this one up here. So basically, what's been happening is this this uh, princess goes up and around, goes into this apiarist pipe. Since it's not a meadows or a forest, it goes to this one, the yellow, comes through here, triggers the uh, item detector to send a, a redstone signal down to this block to pull from here, which pulls one of these, and we end up back in here with the cultivated princess and one of these 63. And then also you get the drones that come out, and the drones follow the same thing. So the drones come down here, go through the yellow pipe, and add to this stack. So this will just get bigger and bigger. So this is a this is a sign that we have a purebred cultivated uh, princess now. So I'll actually take these guys here. And I'll take what's in the apiary. They should stack. Yep. So now I basically have the cultivated bees completely done now. Good for me. Now I'll switch things around. I'm going to move all these bees down here. And if you remember, uh, before I was working um, down here, and I used a setup to change a rocky princess into a forest uh, by recycling through many rounds of a big pile of forest drones. I'm going to do the same thing up here, but I'm going to use the common bees that I already have. I'll show you how I'm going to do this. Uh, quite simply, I've got all the common bees lined up in here. And I'm going to switch this to send all of my bees, all of my princesses, down this way. So now those two are closed. All of the princesses are going to go to yellow. So they're going to go down the center one, which means that they're going to trigger this center chest, and it's going to start drawing common, 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 common. And if my uh, instincts are correct here, there's enough common bees here to transform whatever princess I put in there into a common princess. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Looks like we've got our common princess. And in our chest we've got a whole stack of common drones, so beautiful. It looks like we've actually completed the, uh, the common branch. Yep, yeah, we've got forest, meadows, common, and cultivated nice stacks of forest drone, all, uh, drones uh, for each species. So uh, yeah, that completes the episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed completing the comic branch with me. Next time we're going to move on. Uh, that's the end of episode three. Don't forget to subscribe and see you later.